Hey everybody, happy Friday. Happy to be Friday, folks. We are here uh, watching the Padres game and hopefully everyone else in San Diego is too. So they're probably not watching us, but you might watch us later. Well, you could do both. Like we could watch the Padres together, like back at the beginning. Oh, of double play. Oh my goodness. Okay. That was good right there. Okay. Remember like during the pandemic where you would hang out with your friends? Like we watched the Super Bowl with Mac and Angela. They were, we, we were on Zoom with them and they were watching the Super Bowl and we were watching the Super Bowl. Yes. Like when you had COVID and we watched the Miss America 1984 pageant together. Yes. So anyway. We're watching the game with you guys. Yeah, we're watching the game with all of y'all. And so, um, well, for those of you who don't know, the National League Championship Series is tied one game to one game, and here we are in game three. Phillies are up by one and uh, have one man on uh, third base right now. We just uh, They just hit into a double play, so there's two out with a man on third. And the Phillies are up by one run, and it looks like we're about to get that third out. So there you go. Padres retire the side, and uh, now we have a little time to talk to you because the game will have a little uh, lull. <laughs> so have you seen this goose that's like the new symbol for the Padres? I, what is that? It's a, it's a greater white-fronted goose, which apparently is from Canada. And um, so the Padres were playing the Dodgers at Dodgers Stadium. I think they were playing the Dodgers, but they were at Dodgers Stadium. Yeah, yeah, they were. And uh, apparently the game was going not great for the Padres, and then a goose crash landed on the field. Oh. And after that happened, the Padres rallied and won the game. Oh, that's where the goose comes from. Right. Now, see, I got to be honest with the folks and tell you that I really don't have time most of the time to pay much attention to what's happening in the sporting world. I, I don't really watch NFL football and I love baseball, but don't have a whole lot of time to sit and watch it. I go to games when I can, but I, I don't watch it on TV. Therefore, the, the Padres being in the playoffs kind of surprised me. Last week, I was like, what? We're playing the Dodgers? And I got a little crap for, for not knowing that. But fact of the matter is, I'm a fan, but don't have a lot of time to watch. And I didn't know we were playing the Dodgers until we'd pretty much taking them apart so well I saw an opinion piece in the LA Times about how the Dodgers shouldn't even have to play the Padres mm. because the Dodgers are so much better that you know they should just give the you know just say that the the Dodgers won because mm. they you know they're so much better they shouldn't even have to play the Padres well guess what Dodgers you lost you lost and I've seen and um you know well, hi Bella hi Bella so I've seen a couple of Dodger fans on on Facebook, you know, with this, you know, F the Padres thing and I'm like, what, you know, wh where is that coming from? It's not very nice. They're really, really sore, sore losers. I mean, sometimes you lose. I mean, if, if you're from San Diego, you're more used to it, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess we, that makes us we've had, better losers. Right. We've, we've learned how to lose gracefully. But some of you Dodger fans, mm. you know, just, you know, you, you got beat. You can come up with whatever reason you want. Your manager guaranteed that you were going to be in the World Series, and you're not. Well, I don't yeah. have any ill will against the Dodgers or their fans, except when they're like throwing shade. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, you know, you don't have to be rude to us, and right. you know, I mean, come on. What what about sportsmanship, mm. sports folksship, sports personship, Spor sports sports <laughs> yeah, sports personship. I think there's certain words that just do not lend themselves to political correctness. It's you know, sportsmanship. Not necessarily meaning that everybody who plays sports is a man, just, you know. All right, well, we'll work on that one yeah. later. Okay, so Wallet Hub, one of our favorite uh, places. You look like you're distracted oh, there's by a, the Smirnoff commercial. Yeah, what, commercial, they were, they, were, they were showing vodka. <laughs> <laughs> it had some different fruits and things yeah, that yeah. looked look good. Um, okay, so Wallet Hub, you know how they like to put out these surveys about different things to yeah, you know, yeah, make clickbait for their site? So they just released a study ranking the greenest cities in America, and they mm. took the top 100 cities and ranked them according to most green. Now, guess who won number one most green? Portland? That's a good guess. That was number two. Mm. Number one was San Diego. 
Greenest city. Greenest city. city. Yeah, that's what they said. Um, it's, it's like uh, they looked at uh, amount of renewable energy and overall oh, helpful environment. Greenest. Okay. Yeah, okay. greenest. What, right. what did you? I oh, thought oh, it was like green, green, uh, like environmentally friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That. Okay. Yeah. So we're so number one. We're number one. Nice. And they said a lot of it is because SDG and E, uh, forty percent of their power generated is renewable, like solar and wind. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize, you know, we all kind of. We don't love SDG&E. Everybody's always angry at SDG&E, but apparently their uh, power is their power generation is is among the greenest. Well, that's good. So I guess you know at least we're getting uh, you know even though we might be paying more than anyone else, we're we're uh, doing it greenly. At least forty percent. Mm -hmm. So number two is Portland. Number three, Honolulu. So the least green cities. The bottom three are all cities in the Phoenix suburbs. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert, Glendale, and Mesa mm. are the least green cities in the United States, according to WalletHub. Interesting. So, I don't know, guys, you might want to... Green wanna it up. Green it up, yeah. Green it up. Green it up, Phoenix. Suburbs. Uh, Gilbert, Glendale, and Mesa. Yeah, green it up, Phoenix. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, we're supposed to talk about the market, ah. but okay, I only have one thing to say and it's okay. good news. So I was, <laughs> I was at the dollar store in Claremont and I mm. heard some folks at the dollar store talking about the real estate market. Okay. And whenever I'm out and about and I hear people talking about the market, you know, I usually will kind of eavesdrop. So I, you know, hung out in the tchotchke aisle and pretended to look at it while I heard these people talk about the market. These and were they, just random people in the dollar store? They were employees. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're talking about the market and this one guy was saying to the other guy that he heard that the market is going to bottom out in the next few weeks and that he's going to buy a house and some land. Okay. So that's the word on the street in the dollar store because, you know, we're kind of, you know, waiting for the bottom. Is this the bottom? I don't know when we're going to, you know, because all the buyers are kind of hanging around waiting for prices to drop. Huh. Well, <laughs> yeah. According, according to these people at the dollar store, it's happening in the next few weeks. So hopefully it will happen and we can all move on. Well, you know, I'm going to start taking my uh, market advice from dollar store employees. I mean, that, that sounds as good as any other estimate that I've heard. We can stop doing a comparative market analyses and you yeah. know, going to broker caravans and stuff and just hang out at the dollar store. According to the fools at the dollar store, this is what's going to happen. And by fools, we mean folks. That's slang. I mean, I'm sure these people are as intelligent as anyone. Like, yeah, yeah. No, I don't. Know. I don't. Yeah. What's up, fool? You want to go have lunch or whatever? Right, exactly. It's like it's a, dude. Right, exactly. Or... That's, but sort of a Humboldt County 1990s. I'm sure other people use that term too. <sighs> yeah. Just yeah, to clarify, yeah. you know, we don't have we don't have any judgment against people who work at the dollar store. No, we love them. Yes. And their market analysis. And their, yes. Right. It's and too bad market. we couldn't bring them in here to talk. Well, maybe next time I should mm. ask them if they wanted to hang out. So, do you want me to say anything about do it? Do you want to say anything? Well, do you think the guys at the dollar store were correct or no? I don't know if they're correct about the bottom in the next couple of weeks. All I know is that, uh, you know, prices are dropping like a stone. Uh, and I don't know where the, where the bottom is and the data doesn't really reflect it yet. But, you know, if you're counting on your home equity to, uh, you know, get cashed in this year or next year, I would say, you know, not, not a good time if you're looking for the top because we are, uh, at, at, at the moment, the, the feeling on the street is that things are in a bit of a, a, a free fall kind of situation. And um, where the bottom is, I don't know. Sellers are asking certain prices. Buyers are offering other prices. And uh, in a lot of cases, they're not coming together. You know, there's what, 4,200 homes on the market and half of those have been on for more than 30 days. So they're overpriced and the other half just haven't gotten the 30 days yet, so. Well, I'm taking Jerome Powell off of our Christmas card list. Jay Powell, you're not getting a card this year. You screwed it up, buddy. You better think about that when you're opening your Christmas mail. Yeah, the Fed is definitely not thinking about you and me and you when they're doing what they're doing. They're thinking about more uh, high-level stuff, institutional investors and so on and so forth, and banks and whatnot. Um, they know they're screwing up the real estate market and it's not that they don't care. It's just that, you know, 
they don't they don't know what else to do and they don't have anything else they can do and that's all i have to say about that all right well let's move on all right okay so next monday is halloween yeah i know it's on a monday not this not... coming monday the monday after oh, oh well okay this weekend's the 22nd 23rd. i guess i could, i think of that as this monday like the monday that's about to happen is this monday and then the, i sound, always get this, tripped up with this this and next thing this sounds like a seinfeld episode like one time my friend Kim asked me if I would come to her art studio next Tuesday. And it was like um, maybe a, a Saturday or a Sunday. And I said, sure. So I put it in my calendar. And then she called me on what I would consider this Tuesday and said, oh, are, are you, are you going to be here? Because I was late. Because she expected me like what I would consider this Tuesday. But I was planning on what I thought was next Tuesday. <laughs> so, this seems anyway. like a pretty confusing show. <laughs> Anyway, I forgot. Oh, I'm Halloween. Change yes. the channel. So, de <laughs> <laughs> depending on semantics, Halloween is either next Tuesday or no, no, mm. <laughs> next Monday, <laughs> next Monday or two Mondays from now. But it's well, on a Monday anyway. In my view, here's here's how I see it with regard to the whole this Monday. I mean, this Monday, in my view, was a couple days ago. Because we're still in this but isn't week. Isn't that last Monday? Well, that's this week, though. Next Monday, to me, is the Monday coming up, which is going to be the, the... the Oh, my. Okay. All right. San Diego is advancing. No. Yes, we're advancing. A, no, he went back to first. Never mind. Nothing really happened. Um, so next Monday, to me, is the 20... Fourth. So this Monday already happened. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, Halloween is on a Monday and it's coming up soon. Yep. So um, Airbnb is rolling out new noise sensors to crack down on Halloween parties. Okay. So they're offering these to hosts and you can monitor the noise level in the, in the house that, that you're renting out. Yeah. Okay. Which I don't know. I mean, I stayed at a Verbo with a friend, and it, it was she was the one who was renting it. But they had cameras. They had cameras outside, and there was a camera that was pointed like right at the pool, which I thought was fairly invasive because there was like you know people hanging out in their bathing suits and stuff. And so I don't know. They've got that, and now they're going to have noise sensors. And I mean, we could probably make a lot of noise just with you know the four of us. So I'm not sure yeah. how I feel about this. But if you're staying at an Airbnb, they may now be adding noise sensors. Well, the whole Airbnb thing to me, like, I don't know. I, I like staying in a hotel. I, you know, I can call a front desk if there's an issue. I, you know, if I'm staying at a Marriott property, I expect a certain level. They don't give you a list of chores for before you leave. Yeah, but... yeah, all that kind of crap. <clears throat> and, you know, it's like, I guess I could see, I could see a... Um, a use for an Airbnb in certain situations, but it makes me real. I mean, I, I, I scroll through Airbnb if we're going somewhere and I'm like, oh, that place looks nice, but you don't know the neighborhoods. You don't know what the house really looks like. And as a realtor, I've been in lots of houses where I looked through the photos and I was like, wow, that looks great. And then you get there and you're like, holy crap, this is a mess. So ugh, I'm not, I'm not a huge proponent of that. And these homeowners have people coming into neighborhoods and you know if you're so worried about noise then you you shouldn't be renting your house out and causing noise i, I don't know if i lived next door to an airbnb i'd be pissed I, yeah i'd be too. pissed off and there's a lot of people in ocean beach and mission beach parts of san diego that are pissed off because and i you know i keep That's saying strong language well I, I hear this at the at the city meetings that i go to uh, residents in Mission Beach are really upset. They're very upset because, you know, the house across the alley has a new person in it every night and they're coming home at two o'clock in the morning and they're making noise because the folks that are renting these places are on vacation. Right. They're there to have a good time. <laughs> they don't care that the guy next door has to go to work in the morning or kids have to go to school. And I don't know. The whole thing to me is just a big crock of well, anyway, they're adding noise noise sensors in now, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, it's like we've replaced taxi cabs with Uber and Lyft, where you just get into some stranger's car. We've re yeah, we've re I spent my whole life being told you're not supposed yeah. to get into stranger's car. Right. So there's that, and then, and but that that may be a bad example because I think the taxi industry might have might have been one that needed a little uh, little help. Well, also, you don't have to pay to clean the car when you get out of the Uber either. Like right. if you stay at a hotel, the cleaning fee is all rolled into it. And you know, I've looked at at. Uh, at uh, Airbnb and Verbo before, and by the so you look at the price, but then by the time you add in the cleaning, which I understand they have to clean, but and then that's your problem in my view. <laughs> <laughs> so just you know make the overall price, you know just give us right. a flat price, just tell us what the price is, and then the Airbnb fees too. It's like Ugh. you know a hundred. I, I don't remember what it was, but by the time you added in all that stuff, you might as well just be you know staying at a hotel where you know you're 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 staying where a professional host is you know that's their job they're professional hosts and there's right. someone on staff and if you know there's you can call corporate and complain if cause, i mean so you i think how often would you say when we're staying in a hotel you end up calling corporate and complaining and getting you know something i, I don't every know. third time okay. yeah. <laughs> every third time um so yeah there's i mean we're 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 re we're trying to replace everything with an app. Everybody wants to replace everything with an app. And you know, it's like some things are just, you know, should just be left alone, you know? Well, this kind of segues into my next, uh, my next um, note here, which is that re researchers at UC Berkeley have unveiled the world's fastest clothes folding robot. So, I am a clothes folding robot. Yeah, the folks Beep, at UC boop, pop, okay. Berkeley are, you know, um, it seems like they could be working on green energy or something, right. but anyway. So they are working on the world's fastest clothes folding robot, and they have it. It's called uh, Speed Folding. That's the name of the robot, which... That's creative. Uh, yeah, I would, have, I would have spent a little more time on that, but I guess they were busy building the robot. And, sure. So it can fold 30 to 40 randomly positioned garments per hour. Wow. Which, um, I'm trying to turn on our fan here. Because okay, that's getting kind of hot. So the previous record was three to six garments per hour. So 30 or 40 garments an hour, that's, it takes, that's taking like, you know, two minutes to fold something, which... That's not that fast. No, not really. So hopefully they keep working on that, uh, you know. Mm. I am a very slow, <laughs> closed folding robot. I wonder how long it takes it to fold a fitted sheet. Oh my God. I don't think I've ever folded one of those properly. <laughs> I don't know if you can fold a fitted sheet. It's all elasticy on the edges. Yeah. You guys know what I'm talking about. I all right. I just kind of wad it up into a ball and stuff it in the corner of the. Screw of it. it. Yeah. It's only going to get un unfurled and put on the mattress anyway. Right. Okay. So na today is National Back to the Future Day. Marty. Yeah. We're gonna get Back to the Future. Great Scott. Yeah. Okay. So because at the end of the first Back to the Future, you know when they. Uh, when Marty and Doc go to the future and they end up in the future? Yes. Okay, so uh, the clock on the DeLorean shows that they've arrived at the year 2015 on the 21st of October. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's the past for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in 1984, that was like, oh my God, you're blowing my mind. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have flying cars and all kinds of crazy stuff in the right. future. I still don't know where our flying car is. But. Yeah, they make them, but they're like $300,000 and you, you know, what are you gonna do? They make flying cars? They have some. No, oh, I didn't know that. I don't, you can't really like use it. <laughs> the, FAA, the FAA doesn't yet really have protocol for that. Someday we'll have flying cars. It'll be like the Jetsons. You know, they'll make that noise too. Well, hopefully everyone will be responsible with their flying cars. I hope so. There won't be any issues. Mm. All right, well, do you have anything else that you want to talk about? Um, I, I don't know, I've probably, irritated enough people with my anti-dodger stuff and sorry my, dodgers fans uh, sorry if sorry you like Airbnb airbnbs folks. yeah i mean i'm um, sorry people from phoenix okay and the suburbs okay here we go we got one okay yes one man out in the bottom of the second philly's still on top by one padres still have a big zero in this game but we're only in the second inning so you know there's there's plenty of time plenty of time but uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else I could add. I mean, I wish I had better news about the real estate market for everybody. And I know I've been uh, sort of trying to uh, soft pedal this thing all year. But at this point in time, I'm saying it's hitting the fan. It is hitting the fan. We're going down and we're going down hard. 
<laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. If you've got a house to sell right now, you better be ready to price it aggressively because if you're sitting there thinking, oh, I just want to try this price for a little while, it's moving down quickly and you're going to get buried. I mean, I we have a listing uh, right here in Carmel Mountain Ranch that we've dropped the price $100,000 in the last 30 days and we can't get an offer anywhere close to our our, We've had lots of offers. Well, just... we and we had one last night, a buyer that you know, and we've this has happened twice now in this one on this one listing, twice on one listing where we've had everything worked out because sometimes that you know you counter back and forth, and the last thing you do is you you call the other agent and you say, look, are your buyers ready to do X, Y, and Z? And they say, yep, send me the counter and they'll sign it right now. Well, we had that all worked out last night at a great price for the seller and, and buyer, in my opinion. And we sent that counter offer as agreed, as discussed. It never came back in this morning. They had changed their mind. And this is happening all over the place. And this is a sign that buyers are just not willing to pay what sellers are asking right now. So, um, you know, we're it's like any other market it goes up and down I say we're in trouble we're not in trouble it's just pr prices are not what you thought prices are not what you think they are and it's because interest rates have more than doubled in the past four months so you know your buyers payment has gone up by nine hundred eleven hundred two thousand dollars a month and they're not gonna pay it bottom freaking line they're not paying it and I always have been saying all year long that you know there's several things the market can turn on and one of those things is buyers could decide that's it i'm not buying and that's kind of what's happening right now so i, I mean i'm rambling but you're going to start hearing a lot more of this from me unfortunately because i have decided that i am no longer going to be uh soft pedaling the market in for oh no padres huge error oh god oh god <laughs> On oh, top of everything oh, else. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. He just, he hit a double. Oh, jeez. So, okay, now the Phillies have a man on second. And I can say man because they're all men uh, out there. I think they're all, he is in, you know, all their pronouns. So, um, yeah, Padres just, uh, he hit the ball out there into, uh, hit the ball into center field. And the center fielder just, could, oh, the center fielder just missed it. Ugh. That's what you call an error. Uh, I kind of went, I mean, he just wasn't there fast enough. All right, well, um, at least we still have our health, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, okay. that's the jet lag factor right there. And that's what happens. You know, mm. you got an away game, these guys flew in, they're in a different time zone. The weather's different, the air's different, the fans are yelling at him. And he was distracted and just didn't get to that ball fast enough. Anyway, I feel like we should probably, I mean, we could just keep it rolling and let them, you know, I could commentate on the game, but uh, maybe they don't want to hear that. Yeah, I think we're probably good for now. Let's wrap it up. All right, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Happy Friday. Hope you all have a good weekend, and we'll see you next time. Have a good weekend, everyone.